Okay, so let's add some interactivity. I'll close this window here. And what I'm going to do is let's maybe I'll start with um, I'll start with one of our blender objects. First of all, we're going to have to add some buttons that um, allow us to shift between things. So I'm going to double click and I'm going to go into the chop panel and I'm going to type in KEY for keyboard. I'm going to get a keyboard in chop. And by default, it's just got the key one. So if I press the number one, I get a signal and I'm just going to press space and two. So now it's got two channels and if I press the buttons one and two, we get our channels. Okay, now I'm going to add just a couple of things. Well, actually, I'll show you where I want to go. I'll put in a null, a null here. And at the moment, we're just getting exactly what we press. But what I want is just a, a signal one or a signal two. So I'm just going to add in a logic and put this to radio. And I'm going to add a fan and put this to fan in. Okay, so now we've got a zero and a one. Now zero and one, that's just telling us our first and second button. I can just put in a three, four, five here, and we can go one, two, three, four, five, and we're getting you know five different values. So that's great. So one and two is all we need in this case. Perfect. So I'll show you what we're going to do with that. First of all, let's have a look at our large vase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, let's see if we can do this constant, pop it here, and I'm going to take a composite, pop it here, and I'm going to put the composite, the constant in, and then the vase in. Is that going to work? Yep. And now I'm going to set the operation to a top. So you can think about this like layer blending in Photoshop. You know, I'm just using this color um, and, and this color to turn this into a mask. And now I can change that to like any color you want. Now I've got a pink vase. So if I add, uh, just to be clean, I add a null here. Now I've got two versions of this vase. You know, if I, I could put this back here and we could just, uh, just so we can sort of see what we're looking at, we've got like vase one and vase two. So if I right click here and I put in a switch, we can switch between the two of them without changing the final address. So we can do all this without going back into Canton Mapper, which is kind of nice. So if I put in the parameter viewer, if I open that up by pressing P and I just change this index to one, you'll see that my vase is now pink. A and you can see that, look, my mapping wasn't perfect. I could spend a bit more time correcting this, of course, but I want to keep these videos short. So. What's cool is if you see this index, 0, 1, 0, 1, well, that's exactly like the switch we just made. So I'm going to use this signal here to control the switch. And to do that, we can just click this little star kind of icon here, which makes that viewer active. And now if I put my mouse over it, it goes green. And I'm just going to drag it onto the index parameter of the switch and hit Export Chop. And you'll see that there'll be a little arrow with the connection there. And now if I press 2 and 1, we're changing back and forth. So that's pretty great. So you could do that to all of your objects pretty easily. Um, I'll do one more and then um, I will... Uh, actually, no, <laughs> I don't need to do one more. I, I think you get the point. You can repeat that for all of your objects. So I'll do a, a different... Um, uh, a, diff <clears throat> a different form of interaction this time. Um, or not interaction, animation. This time I'll grab an LFO. And what we can do is I can just put that to a null. And that LFO at the moment, LFO is just low frequency operator and it's going from minus one to one. I could just quickly math it, which is just going to put the values, you know, in a different, in this case, a different range. I'm going to say from minus one to one, just go from zero to one. And, you know, in this case, I could, I'll still do this color masking thing. Actually, look, I'll just use the same base. I'll just go to the switch and in, instead of using um, this 
this null here, I can right click and just um, reset parameters, so that switch is now gone, and I should be able to just drag this, um, export chop. Okay, not super great. Um, what we probably actually need to do is uh, change that signal to something a bit more useful. That's a bit better. Yeah, okay, so you can see that like the way this LFO was giving us a signal, it was using a sine curve, so it was interpolating up nice and smooth, which can be really useful for other things, but we actually just want a switch going up and down. Um, we can change all sorts, sorts of things here. We can make the frequency lower, so that'll happen less often, or we could make it higher, and it'll be flickering, which, I don't know. <laughs> that, there could be an interesting thing you could do of having a flicker between, you know, your, your objects and, um, I don't know, it's, it's purely a creative decision. Um, I'm going to make some more of these tutorials with little ideas, but that's just where I wanted to start you off with. So if you see the video I've got on screen now, um, you know, if you take this a little bit further, you can really make this sculpture with projection mapping quite an interesting artwork. So that's what I will leave for you to explore in the rest of the course. Okay, see you soon. Bye-bye.